Hey everybody, Free and Forgiven here. Um, this video is choosing the right macaw. I've had a lot of people ask for this, and it is actually a very um, in-depth subject that I'm actually glad people want to see. Now, choosing the right macaw for you is not as easy as just, hey, I'm going to go pick out this uh, bird, and that's it. There is actually a lot more to it. Uh, first and foremost, I suggest you start off with something small, cockatiel, kakariki, something like that, um, to get you used to caring for a bird. Uh, now, if you do decide to go to a large bird, that does not mean you get rid of that bird. The people who get rid of starter birds, it, it, it's very wrong and it's not right to the animal, Very, it's asinine. Now, you can handle a smaller bird regularly. The care they take, you gotta understand a macaw is gonna be about tenfold by that. And before you really delve into a macaw, you need to take a few things in consideration. Can you handle taking care of a creature that can live to be a hundred? Are you going to be able to care for it? Do you have means to someone to leave it to if something happens to you to care for it? That is a big one. How well can you handle volume? And I will get into that more. Can't do loud noises bother you? Do you live in an apartment? or, you know, live with people. These are all key things. If you live in an apartment, you cannot have a macaw unless it's a Hans macaw. Too much noise. You live with people, you need to understand the volume drives my wife up a wall. Uh, you have to be very sure you're willing to take care of a creature your entire life. Now, to get more in-depth about this, imagine a two to three year old that lives to be a hundred that never grows up, that runs around with a pair of scissors and will destroy anything it can get. Can you handle that for your entire life? That's a macaw. To give you an idea on the volume, Phoenix, when playing, can be heard two blocks away. Can you handle that volume level of something that can be heard two blocks away from your house? That is when he was playing, that is not when he's belting and screaming. Another step up on the volume, my hunting buddy's younger sister actually lives a couple streets over. She has a blue and gold macaw. Spring and summer, or fall, our windows are open. If her windows are open, our birds communicate across the entire freaking subdivision. Is that a volume and something you're going to be able to tolerate? Are you going to be able to care for a creature that has to be outside of its cage six to eight hours a day? Are you a total neat freak? If you're a total neat freak, you do not need a bird, okay? Cockatiels are messy, macaws are messy, cockatoos are messy. I don't know a truly not messy bird in all reality, and I can't think of one. It, uh, they are very high maintenance, and it also requires total life gyrum adjustments. No Teflon, non-stick pans, out the door. No air fresheners, no candles, no smoking. You need to try and avoid gas appliances, fireplaces, any cleaning chemicals other than water bleach mixture, unless you're doing vinegar with something such as Dawn and lemon juice. Um, you have to be, you cannot use, uh, like cooking bags, like the turkey bags. You cannot use shatter resistant light bulbs. Um, you cannot have avocados in your house. There is, I'm going to do another video, but there is a huge list of stuff that are no-goes if you're going to have a bird because they will either kill it slowly over time and very painfully, or it'll kill them very quickly. These are things you do have to consider. Now, if you're fine with all these restrictions, no issues, you, you know, these are fine with you. 
you get a small bird, you know, cockatiel. Now, I don't suggest budgie. I suggest cockatiel, you know, uh, Quakers, Kakarikis. I understand Kakarikis aren't very cuddly birds. They come and go and do as they please. Um, these birds are tolerable, and if you can handle that, take a step up, so be it. Now, before you go and choose a macaw, you need to also understand, just because you pick the bird, doesn't mean the bird's going to pick you. You could be bonded with a bird, and then you go home, and it decides it likes someone else in your house, and that's their human. And they'll tolerate you, but they're not buddy-buddy with you. Prime example, Phoenix is my bird. Phoenix is my service bird. He still is a mama's boy and loves his mama. So, I mean, if he had to pick between me and my wife, he'd go to my wife any day. You know, and he gets crabby if I try going to pick him up and he's on my wife. Hey, he, he doesn't want to leave his mama. Something you need to take into consideration and understand. Right there, also. You know, these are very, very important things. Now, if you believe you can handle these things, truly can, you need to also understand you're going to get bit. It's not if you get bit, it's when. Birds bite for several reasons. Of course, you know, leave me the heck alone. They also bite to communicate. Uh, when they want something, they will bite when they're testing branches, so when they step up. Now, these aren't going to draw blood and everything. You know, you really make a bird angry. Yeah, they will. Um, the, there are certain different aspects. The phoenix wants something and you're not moving towards it, or he thinks you should understand him, he'll start pinching you to get you to do what he wants. Um, Gizmo, actually my wife's cockatoo, if he's on you and he has to poop, he starts biting the daylights out of you because he doesn't like pooping on you. Uh, so these are all things you're going to get bit. Okay? Uh, plain and simple. How bad? It depends on what. I have several friends that get chomped hard because they have different birds that are very... Uh, have issues. Now, okay, you continually can say you can handle these things. You need to read up on the species you're interested in, whether it's Han, Scarlet, Green Wing, Severe, what McCall species entices you. Pardon me. You need to read. Now, don't just get stuff off the internet. Don't take what I say is gold, okay? You need to pick up books. And I actually got some gold uh, right here. So, there are different ones. Like, Guide You uh, Companion Bear Behavior by uh, Barron's. You know, I have lots of books by Barron's. Barron's has some of the best bird care books um, you can find. I will say do not read the For Dummies Guide for Parrots or Idiots. I forgot what the orange cover one is because that book will kill your bird because they even talk about how onions there's fine in there. Don't even go with it. Go with the Barron's books. Read them. Find reputable rescues, bird stores. Talk to them. Make sure they are reputable and they're not the slimy used car salesman type. Uh, Petland's horrible. Uh, no offense, PetSmart and, and Petco they don't sell big birds and they really don't have people that know a whole lot about big birds um not the place to go um you can call places um my two favorite bird stores are wholesale bird and cage and varieties and they will answer questions and let you talk their ear off trying to figure out what's right um star st louis avian rescue is good um they'll help you out it, there, you need to find places like that uh, around you um, or you know I have a feeling most people you hit them up on Facebook they'd be willing to chat with you and talk to you um, especially because some people travel long distances for certain birds now you need to read up on species you want and really get a feel for it understand what it's going to take what you need and the requirements are um, helps you understand the personality I've done personalities on the cause I own um, like I said Rita right here is a bit different for a military macaw as she is a rescue and had a very hard life. Ain't that right, baby? Huh, yeah. She's enjoying looking at the graphics in the studio on the computer. So, she likes uh, looking at pictures and stuff. But you need to understand the personality. You need to understand some macaws can be buttheads. 
Severe macaws are notorious for being jerks. Um, Scarlet's will butt heads with you. Um, you also need to look at the price factor. You fall in love with the highest synth, you want a highest synth, you got your heart set on the highest synth. I'd love a highest synth. Don't get me wrong. Starting price is ten grand to fifteen grand, and this is twenty seventeen. On top of that, they require special cages. They require um, stainless steel aircraft grade cages. Reason being, um, a normal macaw cage, you know, from AE Cage Go or somewhere like that, they will destroy in a matter of minutes. They can snap the welts. So you need to take that in consideration. Um, Blue and gold macaws are typically the most common and least expensive. You know, uh, militaries are put in endangered species lists, so some states you can't get them, other states are, uh, they can't cross state lines, da 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 da. So, yeah, you said on that. Uh, you really need to research personality. Now, understand, not all birds follow the typical personality traits of that species. Then we're going to go into figured out what species you want, you know, you find a reputable place to go, or you find a rescue, um, lots of birds need homes, alright, if you can, rescue, you know, it, in all reality, if you can, go to a rescue, um, if not, make sure you do some research on your breeders and the people selling them and make sure they're very reputable, um, we've done work with Star, and we, uh, got birds from Wholesale Bird and Cage and Varieties when we have actually purchased them. Um, so, just, if you can, rescue. You know, as the saying goes, uh, adopt, don't shop, if possible. But if you are going to buy, make sure it's reputable. Now, like I said, you figured out what species you want. You go, go see the species. Now, you need to understand, it's not just picking out a bird and taking it home. Um, birds are very intellectual, they have personalities, they have quirks. Do you want, say, a blue and gold, but there's a green wing that falls in love with you and snuggles up to you, and all the blue and golds are kind of like, eh, get away from me. You know, but you got a green wing that won't leave you alone, following you around, wanting to step up and everything else, even if it's a baby. I will tell you right now, you're going to go home with that green wing. Reason being, birds pick their companions and uh, you can't force a bird to like you I mean uh, the, it just don't happen it, it, it's you can't make you can't make people like you and you can't make a bird like you so if you have your heart set on say a blue and gold and everywhere you go uh, there's not a blue and gold that likes